We start with the foundation of our practices that we have the ta'weez, we put the ta'weez in the house, we put ta'weez upon ourselves, we made our wudu, we, we did all of our spiritual practices, we do our salawats and clean the space that we're in, play salawats within the house, make the madad and building the connection. All of those are building the soul's energy and building the companionship. When Allah قُلْ مَا صَادِقِينَ إِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ have a consciousness and qulu ma sadiqeen keep the presence of truthful servants. Is Allah only talking about the dunya that you find them on dunya only or at every moment keep their presence? So that in all our practices is to do the madad, to keep the presence, to do the spiritual practices, to play the salawats in the house so that the energy comes into the house. All of these are what builds that energy and that reality. So as much as we can clean the space, build our soul, then those difficulties should be kept away. And then there are other issues and other things that happen and it's not such a clean cut because these shaitans can come through nazar, can come through vision that they see somebody and they send their vision, they come through physical. So the, the nefarious jinn they come physically close to people that can cause a disruption in the space. When the spiritual practices are strong then they physically don't come but they send their vision from a distance through different mediums and different abilities that Allah has given to their, their creation. So then at every level we're trying to protect ourselves, build ourselves and push away these types of difficulties, inshaAllah. But you have to do the whole package, all the madads, the taweezes, the practices, the energies because every time there's a difficulty Allah wants something. It's a motivation to build yourself like a practice boxing. If these things don't come people don't prepare themselves for what's really coming. Everybody just becomes heedless and, and uh, all of a sudden they enter into a difficulty. Allah's rahmah and love for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad is that He slowly put them through difficulty like a training so that you can see where you're not coming in strong, that why this energy hitting you, why this difficulty coming to you, why these shaitans are able to come so close. So that we build ourselves, protect ourselves, and make our practices, our recitations to be strong and our connection inshaAllah to be strong. That's why we said all these sicknesses that are coming now they're, they're not just physical and people run for physical, take some uh, pills. There's something behind making you sick. That what you can't see is what you have to worry about. The effect that it puts upon you, you're just taking something to take the effect away. But that creature that behind you and nobody sees, you, sees it is what's causing the difficulty on insan. And Prophet described that when these types of plagues, pandemics enter onto the earth, these are these shayateen, the marada, the, the, the nefarious and bad creatures that Allah has created. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah um, How can we get a deeper understanding after writing down, taking notes? After writing down Muhammadan way haqqaiqs, how can we get deeper understanding of them? You keep uh, writing and meditating, writing and meditating. And every time you meditate and you took a way in which to write, if there was a particular subject that you're thinking on the meditation or on the energy whatever that was written when you're meditating and then you go over your notes again and make sure that you got all of that notes in there, Allah may expand the heart and its understanding and increase that. And many times when you're writing notes from the video. If you're a doctor and watching a video the science of it may bring something else into your understanding. Oh and also this, your mathematician, your computer IT or your graphic design, everybody to their ability 
when they're taking notes their heart may begin to be inspired with more understanding and expanding. But don't try to push it and then start making nonsense. It's not something that you have to push, it's something through your meditation and your connection and your building. Once that's built the heart becomes very light, as a result it picks up inspirations. But you don't push it and say, could this be like this and then the spider like this and then this bus is like this and this and then they come up with all sorts of nonsense. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not the way it works inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa Can you please explain the significance of Surah al Fil related to this month? InshaAllah, yeah we, we, that was good. We should have talked about the, the awrad of uh, this month, inshaAllah. The three shahada, Shaykh, what was the rest? The 300 istighfar? Seven surah. How, 70, how many salawat? Se- Seven times uh, feel. No, no, I'm talking before that, Shaykh. Huh? How many salawats? How many? Three hundred inshaAllah. Alright, better. Three, three shahada, three hundred istighfar, daily sadaqa, then seven times Surat al Feel, and seven times Ayat al Kursi. InshaAllah. And we described Surat al Feel, inshaAllah, that Allah granted when the servant is reciting Surat al Feel that it's actually that, uh, seest thou how, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, seest thou how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant. And the companion of the elephant means there was a tyrant king who tried to use his authority and his might. At that time fighting by elephant was like a tank that he used his might to come to destroy the house of Allah And did he not make a treacherous plan to go astray that this this king came to destroy the Kaaba and Allah said, we made his plan to go astray. And he sent against him a flight of birds, striking them with stones of baked clay that… And this is from tafsir al-Qur'an, the Arbabil they, they had a stones and each stone had a name on it. That every tyrant that was in that field, the Allah had put a name on this stone and they were like lava. That when the bird released them they were spinning like missiles on fire and when they hit the target they went straight through the servant of Allah They burned straight through them. How the bird was able to carry it and from where did these stones come? This is Allah showing that when He wants to fight how He fights. He doesn't need men in weapons. He doesn't need a collective group of crazy people to represent him. Allah says, this whole creation is mine. He merely just ordered the birds pick up these stones and nobody understands where the stones came from and that they were on fire and every target it hit exactly according to their name. Now they have that same technology, they put a chip somewhere and it goes exactly where they want. So this chip already came from Allah And he sent them against them flight of birds, striking them with stones of baked clay. Then did he make them like empty fields of stalks and straws, like a field that had been completely obliterated and they had been eaten up. Then he sent other creation to eat their remains. And awliyaullah have described that Qalb al-Mu'min baytullah. If that is an imitated house, the Holy Kaaba is an imitated placeholder for realities. But that which is much more sanctified is Qalb al-Mu'min. The heart of Allah's believer when it's clean and purified that's holy. 
that Allah built this creation from His two hands, His Divinely might. He blew into them from His Divinely Spirit. So means the heart of the believer is the true house of Allah If they clean their heart, they clean their character, that's why when you enter into that cave and why awliyaullah this recited in this month because it's symbolic of the cave that you have to enter into a cave and, and put yourself into that cave with good character. It's a reflection of what your cave will be. When you enter into a cave with good character, good zikr, good understanding and all of that, that which you're entering into Allah is making you a reflection, that's why you'll be with whom you love. When you enter into that reality Allah makes then your heart to be His home. And that you Allah described in other ayatul kareem of the Kaaba, the Kaaba is the heart of the believer that wash my house, sanctify my house, purify my house and circumambulate my house. So it means at that point and the reality of Surat Al-Feel Allah is describing the heart of believers. That if your heart is in belief and your heart has this love and ishq of Allah and He makes your heart to be a Kaaba then He's, he's telling you, don't worry. Whatever this dunya want to bring to destroy your heart, I will defend your heart from the unseen forces. Well, Allah will send the angels to defend your heart and destroy anything that coming to cause harm to the heart of awliyaullah. And that's why Allah described in hadith that, don't, don't attack my awliya for if you should attack my awliya I declare war on you. And many ulama came that Allah has not given any verdicts of declaring war upon anyone. So when Allah gives from this holy hadith that if you attack these hearts, if you attack these holy people, why? Because those are my houses, I reside within their heart. Of course I'm going to declare war on you because that was my promise to them. That all my samawati wal ard, all my heavens and my earth will defend the heart of that wali. And that's why they said then these are schools of adab and manners that not to do something in which Allah declares war upon a servant. Where you can do many things in Qur'an wrong but Allah never declared war upon a servant. Only in the defense of these houses and these hearts that Allah has put His Divinely light within them. So each recitation is for the seven layers of the heart so that the heart is protected. When we recite the seven times it's for the seven layers of the heart to be protected and its realities uh, to be dressed and blessed. All this dunya is geared towards destroying the faith of the heart. They're all abrar, these are the party of the right. You see them representing with logos of elephants. It's still in dunya, same, same mentality, these are just inheritors of that same understanding that the field of arrogance and ignorance and they feel with their might they can destroy anything they want. But not the houses of Allah and not the hearts in which Allah's Divinely love is emanating within that heart inshaAllah. And Ayatul Kursi then alhamdulillah that's the immensity of Ayatul Kursi and that comes from a, a very Divinely presence and Divinely light and what that represents of the Muhammadan lights that every time they recite that, that the Malik al-Khandiyas and the Khadam al Ayatul Kareem who guards that ayah to be dressing and blessing. And there's many, many protections upon every letter of Holy Qur'an and the, and the different angels and spiritual beings that are khadim and servants of Ayatul Kareem in the ayahs of Qur'an and that their protection to be dressed upon servants that recite those for protection inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Falling sick in this month of Safar, is it the jalli of Hiba straightening us or attack of shaitan? 
You know that everyone has to answer, you know there's this types of questions, they're not something blanket that we can throw out onto the… everyone is at a different level. Only you know what your practices are, are they strong, are they weak and uh, what your condition of your health is. So all of these things are… have very different variables. If the practices are weak and difficulty is around and you become sick then there's difficulties of becoming sick. So many, many different variables in life, it can't be given a generic. But always we think that everything Allah wants is best for us, Allah wants to dress us and bless us and we just have to have the ability to receive that blessings. But if we're doing things that are not correct then these blessed tajallis they can cause a difficulty and conflict. So there are people who for example they would get a taweez and go to a nightclub. Uh, you're bringing heaven and going into hell, you're going to have a very difficult life and they would have crazy experiences of you know all sorts of calamities and things flying. and. Because you don't mix the two, so this is one understanding that if we're going to do bad and in these months of, of great tajallis then we're going to have difficulties. But if we're just not well and the tajallis and everything is, is hard then you know we can't blame that on, on those things inshaAllah if that makes any sense. It's very individual. As Salaam Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa what taweez should we wear on our chest? Can we mix more than one or… Yeah the one that Mawlana Shaykh Nazim got and Imam Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani got from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad by inspiration. This is the Naqshbandi taweez that says, Allahu Haqq, it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, then the names of the shaykhs and uh, some other uh, words on it and then Allahu Haqq. And that should be the one that is worn and this is under the barakah and the nazar of Sultanul Awliya Imam Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani and Sultanul Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil and Mawlana Shaykh Isham and Mawlana Shaykh Adnan. That, that has that immense blessing. Then they gave the Ashab al Kaf taweez for the homes for the cars. So that's something you don't put on to yourself necessarily, you can have it on your person. But every taweez has a different energy and may have dis different disruptions. Then there's a jinn taweez and that's for the home, for the car, for, for keeping or near your person but not to be worn on to the body inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How can we protect ourselves from sudden strong pressure between our shoulders in public places even when we have Salatul Wudu, Taweez and Tasbih. Yeah, sudden strong pressure, don't think about it. Again the, 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 this way was not to, to make people to be scared of everything. Because when we talk about the energies and these practices, this is a, a, a way of chivalry. You're talking about the ways of knighthood and who the Imam is Imam Ali Salam. So these practices and these understandings is not for anyone to be scared and to, to have fear at you know the slightest sort of lightning that hits your toe and foot and back and, and to, to run now to hide. These things don't mean anything. So you just take it, do your zikr and, and go and that's it. The fact that you're aware of it is an opening. The, the fact that people can feel energy is an opening. Now as a advancing you're going to feel many things that are very uncomfortable and some things that are maybe slightly uncomfortable. That's just the way of this path. You take, you build yourself and you try to do your salawats, your zikr and all your practices. Then inshaAllah Allah 
make it to be lighter and easier but you're entering into an energy world and the world of light and uh, it makes most people sick and that's why people have diseases and sicknesses. They don't understand why they have them but because of this energy. So the fact that some people can feel it, it's that their body is trying to defend and push away negative energy. We say the energy will come and come to your feet because it's just the force of negative energy and qudra that is, is from dunya it comes to your feet and from your feet it begins to move up from feet pain to leg pain from leg pain to knee pain, from knee pain to back pain because that's the movement of the energy. So Prophet in Tip al Nubuwa, the prophetic medicine described that because of the energy clash from your feet and then Tanzil Rahmah and Allah continuously sending a rahmah and a mercy upon and the practices and spiritual practices, it comes to the upper level with the heart. So then the clash for the body is in the stomach. So the root of all sickness is the belly and the stomach. So we know that energy is flowing in that direction. So there's going to be leg pains, knee pains, back pains. And this is how the energy is moving so that with the madad, with the, with the bringing of energy stronger than ourselves, our salawats and our practices then that should be able to push those energies down and push those energies down so that they can be pushed away and not to rise upon insan. So when you go to the hospital and to the medical clinics, now everybody is suffering from pain and they don't know why. So because this school of teaching teaches you why, they don't know why and that's the problem. In spiritual healing they don't know why they're sick and they just get medicines for the different sicknesses. But because of the spiritual teaching we know why, that the energies are rising on people and they're not doing any practices, 99% of the people don't do any practices to allow the energy to be pushed down. As a result negativity is coming up. And that's why I said in, in, in spiritual medicine they don't understand the reason why spiritual medicine works and that's again because medicine used to be holistic. If they understood the spiritual aspect they would begin to study the chemical and physical aspect. Once you take one of those out then nothing makes sense to these people. So the reason that tea tree works against the jinn and negative energy is they cannot stand the smell. The bad ones, the ones and bad energy ones, they could be rats, they can be creatures, they can be bears, they can be everything. Whatever we have in our world they have ten times more. They don't like the bad ones, they don't like the smell of tea tree. So when somebody advertises tea tree as an antiseptic, they don't understand why is it an antiseptic, right? They say, oh look it takes away the, the, these uh, bacteria. No, it's not that, it's that the things that were bringing this bacteria and this negativity to people was these creatures and they don't like the smell of tea tree. So as a result of putting tea tree on it became antiseptic for them. So spiritual medicine its understandings then people have to just believe and then when they understood it they begin to implement it. So this is also everything that Prophet brought for us they have immense realities. Turmeric has a power and has a power to, to cause an immense heat and uh, immense reality and it burns many things away. It takes away many negative energies within the body of insan and it's anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, all of these different understandings and realities. We pray that Allah give us back our spiritual understanding of these medicines, these herbs and all of these beneficial teachings that came to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Bi siri Surat al-Fatiha